first of all, it's, uh, it's really an honor for IOM to, to have all of you here this morning, and I'd like to welcome you most warmly. Uh, I'm particularly happy to have you here because I think this is a, a unique uh, World Migration Report. It is our seventh report, and I won't say that the others weren't good also, but this one is particularly interesting, as I will show you on some of the slides coming up here. Uh, it is our flagship publication. Uh, we publish it every year. Uh, we started in the year 2000. We have not always had the funding that would allow us to do it as an annual report, which is our goal. Uh, we will do another one that will be announced shortly after we've had some consultations with our member states. Um, but I particularly, uh, it's really a collaboration. It's our, one of our connections, if you will, with the world of professional scholars at the university who experts in this field of migration. Um, but I would particularly like to single out and thank and recognize our partner, uh, Gallup, the Gallup Poll, which I think is a household word uh, throughout the world. Uh, I want to thank the president of the Gallup Poll, uh, Jim Clifton, who I will be seeing next Tuesday, a courtesy call basically in Washington to thank him for the good support. And the person who made it all possible is uh, Nelly Esipova, who's with us here. I, you know, I, I don't want to embarrass you, Nelly, but we are most grateful to you because I can assure you that the, we, have, we would not have the capacity ourselves to collect this data nor would we be able to afford it if we had to buy it from Gallup. I won't tell you the pittance that we paid them, but it, I, I was joking with Nelly saying that Gallup might want to look on this as sort of a part of their corporate social responsibility program. But they, it, they've really been a true partner for the last three years, and I will be going to Washington to thank the president personally for that. So I, I think you probably know that this year's report uh, is particularly timely, and I'll simply remind you quickly why I say that. There are a number of forthcoming policy forums at which migration is the subject, the theme, uh, that are coming up, and you're already yourselves very heavily involved in those. Obviously, the first one is the second United Nations high-level dialogue on international migration and development. Uh, taking place on the 3rd and 4th of October in, in, uh, in New York. Uh, many of you will be there. Uh, many of us will be there. Uh, that's a very important one. That basically, looking back at the, at the six global forums on migration and development that were held since the first such high-level dialogue in the year 2006. <clears throat> Secondly, next year, the 2014, is the 20th anniversary of the famous Cairo International Conference on Population and Development, which is, a, I know from talking to Dr. Babatunde at UNFPA that this is an occasion to do some assessment and look forward. Uh, the third occasion is the post-2015 UN Development Agenda discussion that's going on, and I think the high-level dialogue will feed right into that. Uh, be considering the shape of the global development framework beyond 2015 when the Millennium Development Goals of the year 2000 uh, reach, uh, reach their conclusion. There's one that's not been yet announced. It's not for me to announce it, but I'm, I'm going to say it anyway because I know that the Secretary General, in, in the course of uh, the various pronouncements after his second mandate, spoke in terms of a World Humanitarian Summit. We don't know the date yet but that also will be a time in which migration will be discussed again. And obviously, our objective, and we think the member states' objective, is to make sure that migration features in the post-2015 uh, discussion, as well as in the 20th anniversary ICPD, and eventually in the world migration, uh, uh, the world population, sorry, the World Humanitarian Summit. Um, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of interest there. Now, there's also been, simultaneously, a growing interest among policymakers and scholars of how to measure the happiness and well-being 
of populations. <clears throat> this is especially evident in high, uh, in high income countries, but also increasingly a concern in, in low and medium income countries. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, the 2009 report of the Commission on the Measurement of Econ Economic Performance and Social Progress, which was established by former French President Nicolas Sarkozy. Uh, this commission, led by the Nobel Prize winning economist uh, Joseph Stiglitz and Amartya Sen, along with the French economist, recognized the limitations of trying to measure social progress and development only in terms of economic measurements such as gross national product. Second, uh, more recently, the UN Committee for Policy Development called for a more holistic approach to development. They argued that the notion of well-being and sustainability should be at the core of the post-2015 goals and indicators. And then finally, I think you're all aware from uh, uh, various uh, fora and a recent uh, reception held here in Geneva of the interests of Bhutan in its happiness GDP uh, measurement proposal. Uh, now, this report is very unique uh, in a number of ways, and let me just mention three. First of all, this World Migration Report 2013 is the first ever global report, certainly from us at least, and probably globally, that tries to establish how migrants themselves rather than researchers and advocates with all respect, assess their migration experience. A very, you get a very different outcome probably from that. And this follows up on a key recommendation of the previous World Migration Report of 2011 uh, on perceptions of migrants and the call to give migrants a voice. This is why we built into our annual council meeting uh, a migrant voices segment where two or three migrants uh, come back and talk about their experience uh, when they migrated. The second uniqueness is, and I've already uh, foreshadowed this in my opening remarks, it draws upon the findings of a unique source of data, the Gallup World Poll. This was conducted in more than 150 countries. That These countries constitute about 98% of the world's adult population. And the poll did something most unusual. It compared the well-being of 25,000 migrants against the levels of well-being of more than 400,000 native-born. Uh, the third unique aspect is that unlike past polls, this report looks at all four pathways of migratory movement, south-north, north-north, south-south and north-south. And as you know, uh, maybe it reflects the prejudice on the part of all of us, but in the past, uh, the, the tendency has been to focus most research, uh, research on south-north migration. In more recent times, there's been a more objective look at migration, and we've discovered that, uh, uh, that there's a, actually more south-south migration than south-north, and that is getting increasing interest among the researchers. But this report goes beyond either. We're now talking also about north-north and north-south, which is uh, being driven partly by the global financial crisis. So then the other unique aspect is the focus on the migrants and their well-being. Uh, I think you have a slide up there. Yeah. Um, it places migrants at the center of the migration debate where they should be. There are a lot of reports on migration development that talk about the broad socioeconomic consequences of migratory processes. But the consequences of migration for the lives of individual migrants can thus be very easily overlooked. This report, 2013, focused instead on migrants as persons and on how the migration experience has affected their lives in both positive and negative ways. Instead of being the passive subjects of academic inquiry, the migrants are given an opportunity to tell their own story. Uh, finally, the World Migration Report looks at development in terms of human well-being. 
There is a need for assessing development-related outcomes of migration in this context of human well-being, consistent with, as mentioned before, recent new orientations in thinking about development that are not limited to notions such as productivity, wealth, or income. In fact, and in conclusion, only very few studies, um, frankly, recently have focused on the well-being of migrants and almost only in developed countries. We are looking at migration and development in terms of human development. In other words, how does migration affect human beings? And in that signal, we haven't really made final decisions, but we will be looking in follow-up to the Diaspora Ministerial Conference. We will be looking at holding another global ministerial conference in 2015 that will carry this theme forward, probably in terms of looking at migrants and cities, the effect of migrants on cities and cities on migrants, as also in terms of the context of well-being. So I think uh, with that, I, my portion of this is done. You'll, you'll be relieved. And now we go to the next part. Thank you very much for your patience.